Hey, it's Nathan, and I've got another talk to document today. Uh, this was a lightning talk or a five minute talk that I gave at the University of North Texas during the Dynamical Systems and Fractal Geometry conference that I helped organize. Um, this is going to be a very fast talk. Uh, it, uh, I won't go into a lot of details on background of things, um, but the main goal is to say a certain thing. So without further ado, I will get started. Um, so Hello, uh, this talk is about the multifractal analysis of F exponents for finally irreducible, irreducible conformal graph directed Markov systems or adjective, adjective, adjective noun. Uh, this, the goal of this talk is to tell you about the main theorem for my upcoming dissertation as I will be graduating and on the job market next year. Um, so if I want to do multifractal analysis in five minutes, I should probably start with an example and then continue by analogy. So let's let uh, phi be a conformal graph directed Markov system corresponding to the continued fraction or Gauss map. Uh, then phi has a symbolic representation given by the bare space with a shift map. And if you go ahead and let f be a family of functions or a family of holder functions, which in this case, we're going to look at the kitchen exponent instead of the usual Lyapunov exponent, because I want to eventually talk about a large class of potential families that you could look at. Um, well, this kitchen exponent, what it does is it's going to go ahead and measure the average geometric growth rate of partial quotients by averaging together the logs of particular symbols that occur in your continued fraction expansion. And when we do this, we're going to go ahead and decompose the limit set, which is the irrationals, into the sets of irrationals that attain a particular kitchen exponent. Now, this is a really nice uh, situation because our coding map or our map that projects us from our symbolic representation down onto our limit set of the irrationals, in this case, is one to one and onto. So we only have this decomposition. And there's also an exceptional set that I don't necessarily care about for my analysis. And there's this theorem from Bonn and their collaborators where they actually go ahead and compute the Hausdorff dimension of each of these components of the irrationals that attain a particular kitchen exponent or, or attain a particular uh, average geometric growth rate of partial quotients. So, um, it's found by solving the system of equations and you get this t function out or the spectrum function out from that pair of solutions or that that those points of solutions uh, that we call the spectrum function that gets, spits out the Hausdorff dimension and it has an interesting shape it's not neither convex nor concave and so my my dissertation question it was to go ahead and say okay given a Finitely irreducible conformal graph directed Markov system satisfying the strong open set condition with a limit set J and a holder family functions F. Can we find a spectrum function T in a similar way? Before I tell you the answer, the answer is yes, under situations or uh, under certain stipulations, uh, I should first tell you what an F exponent is. So uh, if you go ahead and have a symbolic representation of a conformal graph directed Markov system and you have some family of functions. Uh, our holder functions on that conformal graph directed Markov system, you can go ahead and amalgamate them together into a potential on the symbolic representation. And then you can look at a particular symbolic point uh, and average over its evaluation of the, um, over its orbit of the evaluation of the amalgamated function. And that spits out what we call the F exponent of that particular symbolic point. And the thing to notice here is that there's a problem is that we have a coding issue is that our coding map might not be one to one and onto so there are two decompositions of our limit set by f exponents here there's the one where you go ahead and look at the symbolic space decompose the symbolic space according to the f exponent of each symbolic point and then project it down onto the limit set or you could do a similar a similar thing where you find these f exponents on the limit set but you just remove points of non-unique coding from the limit set and my main theorem of my dissertation is that, well, if you have a cofinitely regular, finitely irreducible conformal graph directed Markov system satisfying the strong open set condition, and F, a strictly positive holder family of potentials that are either comparable in some sense to log of the derivatives of the map in your conformal graph directed Markov system, or bounded, and if the amalgamated functions of those two families are appropriately integrable, then you can find... Uh, real analytic solutions to this system of equations uh, analogous to the Fon case 
And the T function that is spit out from that process is the Hausdorff dimension of the projected version of the decomposition. And the cool thing is that the T function is also the Hausdorff dimension of when you look at the limit set itself and just remove non-unique coding points. Uh, and when you prove a theorem like this and you want to do some something like you want to be able to do something with it so you can actually in certain cases uh, explicitly compute what this Hausdorff dimension spectrum function is for these uh, for these decompositions and that's given here in this Lou Roth expansion example uh, but that brings me to the end of my talk okay uh, anyway um, so that was my talk uh, I took a second at the end of my talk to, uh, because this conference was uh, mostly organized to honor my advisor and his uh, lifetime accomplishments in mathematics and his recent oh, uh, awarding of the Sierpinski Medal, which is one of the highest mathematical honors in Poland for uh, mathematics. Um, uh, and uh, I took some time at the end of my talk, I kind of sped through a few things a little bit faster to say, uh, to make sure I had 10 seconds to tell my advisor, Dr. Mario Shabansky, that um, it's been a really, it's been a great joy of mine to study under him for the past few years, and that I have learned so much uh, working on this problem under him for my dissertation, and uh, that I would not be the mathematician that I am today without that man. Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to learning more from him as I wrap up my dissertation work. And I, well, I'm, most of my dissertation is done. There's some follow-up stuff that needs to happen. There's, I'll put out an update video where I talk about things and how things are going. Um, but uh, I've got, I've got a year left uh, where I have PhD things where I can still learn from him. And I'm looking forward to learning as much as I can from him before I skedaddle on to other things. Um, but yeah, anyway, that, that's it. Uh, quick one. Uh, just a little talk documentation. I will have an update video out soon-ish, um, just talking about things that are going on with PhD stuff and how, how that's going. Anyway, that's it. <laughs>